Hello, my name is Ian McCall. Today we're going to have a little look at uh, the just junctional lentiginous dysplastic nevus or the Cossard nevus. This was first written up by Steve Cossard, a dermatopathologist from the Skin and Cancer Foundation in Sydney. And it looked at lesions occurring in the elderly on sun-exposed areas. Well, the thing was that many of these lesions would progress to melanoma in situ, but they didn't have the histological criteria to say it was a melanoma in situ. Um, so they present initially as large, variably pigmented macules, particularly in the upper back. But histologically, they show both lentiginous proliferation of melanocytes with variable junctional nesting. Um, and the melanocytes show a degree of, uh, of atypia. Now, this degree of atypia is difficult to get a consensus amongst pathologists looking at the same lesion. So, this is why it was called a junctional lentiginous dysplastic, and I put in brackets there, atypical nevus. There is no pagetoid upward spread of these atypical melanocytes. If there is any, if a pathologist sees any, they just call it melanocytes. And essentially, if you leave these lesions long enough, they will um, show the, the, the characteristic histological features of melanoma in situ. So many of us feel that these should be cut out early. Let's show you some clinical examples. <clears throat> this is a lesion on a man's uh, upper back. Variable pigmentation. So, uh, you know, quite a badly sun damaged back. We look at it a little bit more carefully. Again, it makes the, the variable pigmentation more obvious. If you're going to biopsy this, you've got to include this bit here. This is going to be where the, uh, the action is going to be. So a large shave biopsy is necessary. Don't just take punch biopsies. And if we look at this dermatoscopically, you can see there's, there's not an awful lot. There are some features well, there's a network here, but it's very variable. Um, there certainly is a network here. It's darker in color. There's no real regression within this lesion. Are these early polygons? Difficult to say with any certainty. It doesn't have the sharp scallop edge of a solar lentigo. You're also looking for a little bit of gray. Is there any gray in this? Because if you see gray dots, it means there's an immune reaction occurring as well. And often there will be a little bit of gray dots. We'll see this better than some of the others. Here's another one. This is the man's shoulder just looking down from above. Now look at the sun damage in this guy. Look at all this atypical pigmentation here as well. And if you look at this dermatoscopically, this is the picture that you see. Variable network, but you can get a network in the solar lentigo. Um, some of the features here are more in keeping of uh, a, a severe solar lentigo. We look along here. There's certainly some regression here. There's grey dots. And if we look at the last one. Look at these very sharp colored edges here. This is a picture that you regularly see in solar lentigos. Of course, you can get mixtures of solar lentigos and, uh, and early melanoma. But a solar lentigo is just increased pigment in keratinocytes. It's not an increased number of melanocytes. Let me show you another case that was reported as a dysplastic junctional lentiginous nevus. This thing here. Now, this guy has multiple solar keratosis, uh, severe keratosis, as you can see here. But this one sort of stands out. You have a look with the dermatoscope. This is the picture you see. Um, some lines curved, some lines reticular, some black structureless areas, sharply defined at the, at the edges. Um, no real polygons within this that I can see. Certainly grey dots and the like up here, suggesting that you're going to see melanin and melanophages. And let's have a look at the histopathology in this one. So, 
I mean, looking along here, you've got um, dirty feet at the end of these ruddy ridges, so it's sort of suggestive of a solar land tiger. You've got melanin, melanophagus, nodermis here. You've got some ruddy ridges that are joined up, um, some ridging here. We need to have a closer look at, uh, at these. Ah, this is just to give you an overall view of, uh, of this lesion. You look along here, though, this is just increased melanin in uh, keratinocytes. So this is really just a solar lentigo. We look along here, though, and then you start to get the impression that there's nesting here occurring in here as well. You know, there's certainly increased melanin in keratinocytes here, but there's certainly some nesting occurring here too. There's an increase of melanocytes here, and there's some variation in the size of the nuclei of those melanocytes. This is melanin in melanophages, this is lymphocytic infiltrate. Go a little bit further along, more atypical melanocytes up the edges of thoretic ridges here. Increased number of melanocytes along here. Then as we move further along, further increase in the number of melanocytes. Some nesting in here as well. Larger melanocytes here. No upward spread though. So this is where you're starting to get lentiginous spread. But how atypical are these melanocytes? That's the issue. Okay, there's more lentiginous spread. Okay, there. Increased number of melanocytes along here. Increased number of melanocytes along here. So it's a junctional uh, lesion. There's lentiginous spread melanocytes. Are the melanocytes atypical enough? I think they are. So this makes it dysplastic or atypical. And if there's any nest at all, they'll call it a nevus. And along here, I think you'll agree that there are increased number of nests here. Essentially, though, you know, looking back at the at the clinical of this, you know, this is not nevus. This is a melanoma, and it's uh, a melanoma inside you, lentical malignant type. So, even though the pathologist has problems making this diagnosis. The clinician doesn't have any problems making the diagnosis. They can see that this is like this is melanoma. Mind you, you've got to be careful. What about this lesion here? Let's just have a little look at, uh, at that. Here we go. Look it's there. Looks a little bit similar, doesn't it? But once you put the dermatoscope on, you can see that it doesn't have the same pattern as before. It's brown black structureless here and this in fact had features when you looked at it more closely you start to see the crypts in the surface of this um, with the keratin in these crypts and this in fact is a separate keratosis and if you look to the histology there was the histology of the separate keratosis these were some of the million cysts that were a bit deeper in this so this guy did have a dark looking separate keratosis as well. Just a couple of other examples. Here's another one uh, behind the ear here. Um, very dark. I mean, you look at this and say it has to be a melanoma. Then you look at the dermatoscopy and this is the picture that you in fact get. Um, there's opening of hair follicles and the like here. There's increased pigmentation around these, obliterating them. I mean, this is the picture of a, of a lentical malignant. And this was the histology that we, in fact, saw. A lot of pigment here in the dermis and melanophages. A lot of pigment up here in the epidermis, in fact, itself. And as we go along and look at the histology of this, you can see there's enlargement of these retiridges, there's joining up of the uh, retiridges here as well. There's an increase in the number of melanocytes. 
And as we go along here, there's an increase in the number of melanocytes going down the follicle. A lot of pigment, as you would expect from the color of this. And this was reported as a junctional dysplastic in the tubes and sneakers as well. You know, from a clinical point of view, this is uh, this is lenticular malignancy, this is melanoma in situ. So, this is the issue. You've got to take the pathology and the clinic, the clinical features, and put them together and look at the dermatoscopic features. Very early on, I think the pathologist does have difficulty in making this diagnosis. Um, and I might just end up by going to this particular website here. This was a couple of cases we put up in the Skin Cancer College blog. Um, I've commented here, I've seen more and more elderly people with chronically sun-damaged backs. I biopsy some by partial shaves and get reports of solar lentigo with slight melanocytic hyperplasia showing a little atypia. And then I've commented that down the track they keep growing, eventually I biopsy them and then it's reported differently. Now here was uh, a man with uh, an area of pigmentation on the upper back. This was it here. This was the dermatoscopic view, similar to what we've uh, we've seen before. And this was the, uh, the histology. Let's just swiftly have a quick look at, uh, at these. And this was reported as lentiginous junctional dysplastic uh, nevus, but then the pathologist put in brackets melanoma in situ. Okay. Now, a little bit of parakeratosis there. Um, some nests of melanocytes here, a little bit of increased pigment in keratinocytes, increased number of melanocytes along here. And you go to this area here, and basically you're just seeing an increase of pigment in um, keratinocytes along the basal layer here. There's a few increased melanocytes. A little bit further along, you start to get more marked nesting. Some joining up of retty ridges of nests here as well. And this is where the nevus element comes in, in the pathologist's description. And a little bit further along, here's the pigment in melanophages. Here's the nests of melanocytes here. This is interesting here. Look at the pigment up in the um, stratum corneum. Some of that pigment here has been extruded um, uh, into the stratum corneum. That gives you the very black color of, uh, of that case as well. Sometimes if you strip that off with, uh, with tape, you're able to actually see things better underneath here with your melanoscope. But you know, when you see that as well, it's uh, often a, a feature of an underlying uh, melanoma. So, that was this uh, particular case. This was reported as a junction of this plastic lentiginous uh, nevus, but the pathologist this time put melanoma in situ. So I think the Cossard nevus is in fact um, a melanoma in situ. Uh, the important thing is not to be seduced by the term nevus and think that it's benign and think that you can just leave it and forget about it. Um, these things should be excised, should be treated as uh, melanoma in situ and excised with at least five millimeter margins. Although again, on these backs with a lot of sun damage, the problem is that they may say, when you excise this, that there's atypical melanocytes at the edges. And if you then look at this person's back, it takes some biopsies elsewhere, you might find there's atypical melanocytes all across his back. So I don't think you need to go um, uh, excessively hard at this patient and feel that uh, these should be re-excised. They don't. Um, the vast majority, five millimeter margins will do. Uh, I know that in some cases of lentigo malignant, um, people now recommend 10 millimeter margins because of this uh, surrounding melanocytic uh, hyperplasia or some atypicality of it. But uh, at the moment, we still just use 5 millimeter margins in these patients. Okay.
dysplastic junctional lentiginous nevus of the L living, um, really melanoma in situ, otherwise known as crossover nevus. Oh, by the way, if ever you get a diagnosis of this from a lesion on the face, um, then I'll categorically say to you, it's no such thing as a, a dysplastic nevus. Um, that's a melanoma in situ for certain. Always take those up. Thanks very much.